Have you ever thought about it, whether it makes a difference if you store your source data in an Excel file or a CSV file? In this video, I'm gonna show you how much of a difference it can make. Welcome to another video of How to Power BI. My name is Boss, and if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing if you wanna stay up to date on all of the latest features of Power BI. Now let's get started. When you connect to data with Power BI, then ideally that data is stored in a data source that allows for query folding. Now this just means that Power Query is able to send one single query to retrieve and transform the data. However, this is not always possible. Sometimes you need to store your data in an Excel file or CSV file. And if you have an Excel file, you save it as an Excel as X or Excel as B, Excel as M, does it make a difference? Now let's have a look if it makes a difference and how much of a difference it can make. Now we're gonna connect to the same data set, but stored with different file extensions. So we have a CSV file, that one is the biggest, 63 MMP. Then we have a JSON file, text file, XLS, XLSB, XLSM, and XLSX. Now let's connect to them and then see how we can also measure the speed of our query. Now let's start off by connecting to the CSV file. As a file origin, I have UTF-8, delimiter, comma, it looks all good, let's load it. Now you see we have 112 errors, let's fix this. So I'm gonna go to Power Query. And then let's go here to the source tab, click on edit. And then make sure here for line breaks that it ignores the quoted line breaks. And that should work. Let's test it by clicking on close and apply. Okay, so the data is loaded. Now let's go to Power Query to see how we can measure how long the refresh takes. Now here in Power Query, there's one tool that lets you have a look at what Power Query is actually doing and how long certain operations take. And this tool you find over here on the ribbon and the tools, and it's called Query Diagnostics. Now you can either turn it on here when you click on Start Diagnostics, then you can run a refresh, stop it, and it will give you all of the details. Now, another option that you have is that you go to a specific step and then diagnose only everything up to that step. Now, in this case, we want to refresh the total query, so we are going to use Start Diagnostics. However, before we're gonna click on it, let's first go here to Diagnostic Options. Now here for Query Diagnostics, we want to choose Enable and Report and Query Editor. And this is the only way that we can use this diagnostics tool for checking how long a full refresh takes. Otherwise, you can only do it on the preview, which is not what we want. Then a little bit lower, we find also the reports that we want to generate, aggregated detailed performance counters and data privacy partitions. Now, the only one that is relevant for us is here this summary view, which is aggregated, okay? This is enough to figure out the timings of different operations. If you really want to have a deep dive, you can also go for details, but for now, aggregated will do. Now let's click on okay. Okay, so now that we have the option set up, let's go and start the diagnostics. Then I'm just gonna switch back to my normal Power BI window, and I'm gonna refresh the query. So let's click on refresh. Let's now go back to the query editor and stop the diagnostics. At the point that you stop it, it generates a new folder with all of the reports that you wanted it to create. Now here we have the report that was generated for us that gives us more insights into all of the operations that were performed by Power Query and how long they took. Now the first thing that confused me a little bit is that in the query column, where we have US videos, because that's a query that we refreshed, we have some nulls. What's that about? Well, my first thought was that I left on an option that says that the data preview in the background can be downloaded. So maybe therefore we have some else. So let's have a look. So let's go to file, then options and settings, options. And then here under current file, data load, we can turn off allow data preview to download in the background. I'm gonna redo the same thing again. So let's click on Start Diagnostics. So let's go back and now refresh my query and then stop the diagnostics. Let's go to the report. Now you see, even with this option turn off, that we still end up with nulls. Okay, now 
How can we solve it? Well, we can first save the file, reopen it, and then try it again, and that will solve it. So let's do it. Okay, so I saved the file, reopen it, and now let's try it again. Let's click on Start Diagnostics, run the refresh, and now let's click here on Stop Diagnostics. You see, we don't have any nulls anymore in the query column. Now the reason why this worked, I don't know, but it's all there. Now let's have a look at some of the other columns that we find here. We have a step column. Now this corresponds to the last step for which you did the diagnostics. Then we have the category for the operation and the operation itself. And here, just in between the data source that we are connecting to. Then we have here also the start time, the end time and the exclusive duration. Okay, so these are the most important ones for us. And then we also have the exclusive duration as a percentage, which just expresses the duration as a percentage of the total for that evaluation, which is represented by an ID number. Now, the second thing that kind of confused me was the ID column, because we have two IDs. Now, the first number in front of the dot, according to the official documentation, that is the activity ID. And so every time you click on refresh, there should be one ID. Well, here we have two. Now the second number is a number that represents an evaluation by the engine. And this number is sequential. So if we run multiple uh, diagnostic sessions, that this number will keep on increasing. And you see over here, that number is one everywhere. Okay. Now what could be the reason that we have two IDs here? Now let's have a closer look. So the first ID goes here until row six. I'm gonna go to my start and ending times. And you see that basically everything was done within a second, okay? Now here for the, now the second evaluation starts over here at 46.07 and continues until 46.15. So the second one is the main one, okay? So I guess what's happening here is that it first reads the file to get a preview of maybe the column headers and then only gets the data in the second process. Now, a second indication that we have is here that in the second evaluation, we have remote page reader run stop. That, that doesn't happen in the first one and takes four and a half seconds. Okay, so I think it just needs to scan it quickly and then only in the second evaluation gets the file. And this is the same for all of the other flat files as well. So now we know how we can retrieve the start and ending time for the entire query and for individual steps inside of that query. Okay, for now, not interesting because we just want to have it at a query level. Okay, so let's use this information now to also get the refresh times for all of the other file extensions. Okay, so now I connected to all of the different file extensions. So you see over here we have CSV, so JSON, text, XLS, XLSB, XLSM, and XLSX. Now let's see which one refreshes the quickest. Now, before I'm gonna do a refresh all, let's go here to file and then options again. Now you see here on the data load settings, I turned off enable parallel loading of tables so that the queries run one after the other so that we get the cleanest uh, result for how long the refresh is. Now in the Power Query Editor, go to tools, hit that start diagnostics button. And now it's time to click on refresh and see which one is the quickest. Now our diagnostics tool is done and it generated a table for us that shows for each query, the start and ending times. You might wonder what now? Is there maybe a functionality that creates a report with visuals that kind of summarizes all of this data? No, that is not there at the moment. However, we can create it ourselves, okay? So before we actually load it, we want to go here to the exclusive duration column and then transform it. And here you find duration and you want to choose total seconds. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier to visualize it later because these numbers are otherwise so small. And now you want to make sure that enable load is turned on. Okay, and let's click then close and apply and start to analyze our data. Now here you have a lot of flexibility on how you can visualize this data. Now we are going to create a bar chart 
And the main thing that we're interested in is the exclusive duration. So let's put it on our bar chart and break it down by the different queries. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go to format and then also turn on the data label so that we can see the exact seconds that every query took. Now from this visual, you can clearly see that the Excel S file is kind of the worst file for storing your data set. Uh, took 41 seconds. And then in the second place is XLS B. A lot of people, they're confused why XLS B takes so long to import because often the file size is a little bit smaller. I think not in this case, but often it is. And it is there because it opens and closes generally also quicker. Okay, but that's something else than importing it into Power BI. Okay, now because there you see XLS X is actually not performing so bad with 4.1 seconds. Now, just above it, we have also XLS M, four and a half seconds. Now, almost no difference. So it can also be the other way around if we rerun the refresh, okay, because the difference is so small. JSON files just above that. And the top performing files there are text files, so TXT, CSV with just 3.4 seconds. And this is maybe a surprising result because the CSV file is the one that was actually the largest with 63.1 MB. So this underlines that it's not about the file size of the source. It's about how quickly Power BI is able to read that. Okay, so CSV, much better than XLS, okay? Although it's not the purpose of this video, just realize that we have much more information here that we can use to further analyze our queries. Uh, so you see, for example, we have category or the operation that we could add to our visual, and then you can see exactly how long each operation took or operation category. Okay, so now it's time to double check our results. So would I get the same result if I individually refresh the queries one by one and then capture the diagnostics report for every refresh and then I just aggregated all of it. And that's what I've done over here. You see, I've created the diagnostic report for the CSV file, JSON, text, XLS, XLSB, XLSM, XLSX file, and then we can append them and double check our results, okay? Now to append all of the diagnostics aggregated reports, we can just go to home, then go here to append queries, append queries as new, and then you click on three or more tables, and then you individually select all of the reports for the individual refresh, so that we append them underneath each other, okay? Now, once you have done that, you just click on OK. And you see we have a similar aggregated report, but then for all of the queries, I'm going to load it and then recreate a similar graph as we just had for the other query. OK, so I've rerun my test and you see that this time, actually, the Excel S refresh didn't take that long anymore uh, in comparison to the other ones, but still is the slowest. Then we again have Excel B, again JSON on the third spot, then Excel S X, Excel S um, they switched places, you see, so it might have been coincidence before that one was a little bit fast, faster than the other. And then we have the CSV and, and then the text file. So they also switch places, uh, just a little bit slower than before. Just keep in mind that every time you rerun this test, the result might be a little bit different, but overall the underlying message is the same, that if you have the choice, you should go for a CSV file. So our results so far indicate that a CSV file is the best option or a TXT file. And if you compare this with an Excel file, the difference is not that big. It's just a little bit quicker. But what happens if we have larger file sizes? Okay, so here the file sizes were still relatively small, around 8 MBs for the Excel file and 64 MBs for the CSV file. Okay, but let's rerun the same test, but on larger files. So for this example, we're gonna focus on the CSV and XLSX file. So the CSV file is gonna be 980 MB and the XLSX file is 268 MBs, okay? Now let's redo experiment on these two files. So I've rerun this experiment for the XLSX and CSV file. And you see the larger the files get, the bigger the difference is. So you see here that for the XLSX file, it took 
uh, about six minutes, so 351 seconds. And for the CSV file, it only took 83 seconds. So that is more than four times as quick as the Excel file. So when you have to use a flat file for storing your data, then you can see that CSV files are performing the best when it comes to refresh times. I hope this video gives you some new insights on what file extension to choose for your data source. Now, I'm very curious to hear about your experiences and your thoughts, then share them in the comment section below. And if you wanna stay up to date on our videos, then also consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video.